talk about splenic sequestration in sickle cell, a life potentially life-threatening emergency that occurs in young children with sickle cell disease and in older children and adults who have been on hydroxyurea and have had regurgence or regrowth of their spleen tissue. Splenic sequestration's pathophysiology is fundamentally simple. Obstruction in the venules outflowing from the spleen cause the spleen to act like a big water balloon and red blood cells, ultimately all the blood uh, components, can be trapped behind those obstructions and resulting in acute splenomegaly as well as pancytopenia and hypotension. These obstructions may be relieved either all at once or in part and the blood components that are trapped behind them can return to circulation. Um, and this is uh, an important element to remember in terms of treating these patients because the, the recycled or released blood is oftentimes um, uh, injured and the red blood cells particularly are damaged, um, resulting in problems for our treatment. The clinical cues for this are splenomegaly, either an absolute splenomegaly or relative. Again, important to compare them to their old records. If their spleen's always been 11 centimeters and you find an 11 centimeter spleen, that doesn't mean anything. If their spleen's always been unpalpable and suddenly they've got a three centimeter spleen, that's a problem. Sudden worsening of anemia with reticulocytosis. The marrow can respond by releasing early red blood cell precursors and you may well see a bunch of them out. Um, so this separates this from an aplastic crisis where you see decreased red cell precursors. Thrombocytopenia can occur, leukopenia, hypotension, and in fact, in severe cases, this can lead to a hypovolemic shock state. So emergency management, first steps. One is IV access. If a person's clinically stable and they're not um, in a pre-shock uh, state, one large bore IV is usually adequate for therapy. However, if they're showing signs of instability or they're showing signs of hypovolemia or they have severe uh, pancytopenia, then I would recommend two large bore IVs so that you can remember to, so that you can more easily support their uh, blood pressure. We recommend hydration with an isotonic fluid using D5 normal saline or D5 lactate ringers at one and a half times maintenance uh, adjusted to maintain blood pressure. Fluid boluses may also be needed. CBC and retic, a type and a cross match. Transfusions are almost, almost always needed in the support of these kids. A type and cross match will also be accompanied by chemistry to look for liver and kidney function and LDH to look for evidence of hemolysis. Careful measurement of spleen size on physical exam and then comparing that to old records to make sure you have a good understanding of how much that spleen's changed. So continuing in emergency management, this is a person who um, should have a phone call to the hematology oncology attending on call. They should also be um, uh, having a pediatric surgery consult. And if signs suggest that you need to uh, be worried about their clinical instability, um, either in a pre-shock uh, state or in a shock state, then PICU admission is mandatory. Pediatric surgeries consults are either STAT or they're non-STAT, but all children with a splenic sequestration crisis get one. So reasons to get a STAT consult. Hemodynamic instability, where a person's going to have to have that spleen removed in order to maintain sort of a life. Um, pancytopenia present at diagnosis, Again, tipping you to a person who's getting worse and may well develop hemodynamic instability in the next uh, 24 hours. And then not the first splenic sequestration event. Now I put a couple of asterisks here. A stat consult gets done when a person is having a repeat uh, sequestration and they're sick. Simply having a second one does not necessarily need a stat consult, but again, all patients need a consult with a surgeon's. 
So surgical indications for want removing the surgery, at first sequestration with any kind of hemodynamic instability or severe pancytopenia. Again, we talked about the pancytopenia being a warning sign for, for complete obstruction. And then a second event, even if the patient's stable both times. More than one means you're likely to keep having them, and each event is independently risky. So just because the first one or two events were mild doesn't mean that event three or event four won't take their lives. So a surgical consult and splenectomy is done at the second event. So our management is to establish normal stable vitals. We want to make sure their volume are pleated. And we want to transfuse to support their oxygen carrying capacity, but we want to be careful about that. Again, all that blood that's trapped in the spleen can, can be released into the circulation, and these cells are hypoxic, and they've undergone um, sickle crystallization, and they may well be dense or hyperadhesive and procoagulant, and therefore they are a risk in terms of increasing viscosity and causing obstruction uh, in other vascular beds. Um, so transfusions are usually done to support oxygen carrying capacity to support blood pressure if you need to and to maintain a, a hemoglobin around 10. Really wouldn't want to have it go much higher than that to avoid viscosity issues. Again, subsequent management after uh, an event are Pneumovax and Minactor vaccines if they haven't already had them. And then once the splenectomy is done, strict adherence to penicillin VK particularly during the first six to seven years of life, um, there is a, a slight increase in the risk of infection in children with sickle cell disease who had a surgical splenectomy versus children who had splenic injury from the sickle cell. And therefore, most people would recommend being on the penicillin for a prolonged length of time in a young child, in an older child or teenager, um, the question is more um, uh, uh, debatable. Um, now, if the person has an event and they're stable and the family refuses to spunk me, the establishment of a reliable medical home and clear instructions to the parents documented in the medical record that they should come for any event that looks like um, an anemia fatigue, jaun increasing jaundice, um, uh, back pain from the enlarging spleen or abdominal pain from the enlarging spleen, um, or if they palpate the spleen and see it's getting bigger. Teaching the parents how to feel for the spleen it should also be done and documented. Establishment of a medical home for this child is critical, and then monitoring closely for when these events reoccur, again, if you have a second event, then the spleen has to come out. So wrap up. Anemia with reticulocytosis and splenomegaly are the giveaways for a sequestration crisis. Anemia without reticulocytosis, think more about parvovirus. A splenic sequestration may be an acute life-threatening event, even if previous sequestration crises were mild. The only effective treatment is to remove the spleen, and the surgical rule is one serious event or two mild events get the spleen removed. So that wraps this up. Thanks for your attention. If you have any questions, drop me an email. Bye-bye.